Okay, how to find the range of a piecewise function. This is actually really easy, but it's so confusing to people. So let's give a give this thing a quick look, okay? Um, this is what I'm going to do. Let's start this way, if you don't mind. Let's start by drawing in our Cartesian plane. So let this be the Cartesian plane right, uh, right here. Let this be the x-axis. Let this be the y-axis, if you don't mind. All right? Now, when we say we're looking for the range of something, of course, what we mean to say is that we're looking for what are all possible y values, right? Not are what are all y values, what are the possible y values. And if you can see here, uh, this function, this piecewise function splits at x is 1. But if you notice here, neither one of them include x equals 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first off, take a look at what these functions look like. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say what happens here when x, so this one, when x is 1. And when x is 1 here, we would get 0 minus, I'm sorry, we would get 1 minus 1, wouldn't we? Squared, which would equal 0, wouldn't it? And, of course, that would give us this point right here. And what I'm doing here is I'm using good notation, and this this hole here shows that the function is not does not include this value. So I'm going to put in this piece right here. This is point one zero here, isn't it? And if we look at this function here, we can tell this is parabolic and it has a general shape, something like something like that, doesn't it? Okay. So that's this one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to say, well, what happens when when x is one in this function? And we'd have two times one minus three would be equal to negative 1, wouldn't we? Uh, wouldn't it? So we'd have the point 1, negative 1. And of course, again, because it says here that x has to be greater than 1, this point is not included either, but it looks like this, wouldn't it? And here's that point, right? And this is the point, let me write it over here, 1, comma, negative 1, right? And then ask yourself the question, well, what does this function look like in general? Well, it's, it's a line, isn't it? And it looks something like that, right? Now, if you see, I only, on the first one, I only included those x values less than 1. So this should be a, a parabola like this, shouldn't it? But only the left-hand side counts. And here the right-hand side counts. So look at this for a second because this should give us some understanding here. What's true about the height values? Isn't it true that the height values are always greater than negative 1? Right? So the range is... So the range of this function, right? The possible heights of this function, the range is y is greater than negative 1, right? Why is that? Let's look at it again really quickly. Because if you look at this, everywhere from here out, the height is greater than negative 1, isn't it? And here, from here out, the height is always greater than negative 1. So what we did was we took the lowest value. And we said that it's always higher than that, isn't it? So here's the range right here. All right, hope this was helpful.